Let's talk not physical, not physical. Let's talk not physical. Let's talk not physical. Let us have some spirit talk. Some spirit talk. Let us have some spirit talk. One thing I'm trying lately is to uh, visualize stuff that then I can use to to try to get out of body. Um, for example, I I do one that I go I go like a drone, I go forward and uh, and I go with different scenery. Um, and I get into it, um, and then I, I sometimes I, I get lost in 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 the in the experience. And also I started trying with wormholes, because I think wormholes uh, get you. I think they get you better to the feeling of getting out of body. I think it's because of the extra rotation or the, that you kind of like, <laughs> it's, it's like a stronger transition that viewing without the wormhole. Um, and, and then another thing that I told Michael is that the more I try these things, the more I'm getting closer to the same similar experience I get in lucid dreaming. Uh, I mean, the, the gap between the way it is in lucid dreaming uh, and the way it is in being awake and seeing these things is getting closer and closer. Um, I was trying to get out of body these days, starting like that. And I got out of body, but it wasn't what I expected. And I, have, I wrote some text. Later on, I can send you the text I wrote because right now I'm telling you the story, but when I wrote it right away, it's, I think it's better because I already described a lot of what happened. So that, that's another thing I try to do. I try to write down stuff mm -hmm. soon so then I don't forget certain things. So the thing is that I was, because actually I had, um, I had to give you a little story. I have some small OBEs that I saw same as in the physical. Like I, I was, watching uh, YouTube and I closed my eyes and I got asleep and I started seeing YouTube again, the, the screen, but I had my eyes closed. Uh, and stuff like that. So when I was trying to OBE, I thought I would see something in the physical. And then I lost the, the perception of the physical, but I got into a lucid dream instead of uh, an OBE. I mean, it was an OBE, but it was an out of body in the astral, let's say. It wasn't the, the, the one I, I wanted to get. I wanted to get locally. I wanted to get to my place. I wanted to go to the parking lot because I wanted to get some, some license plates from the cars outside to see if I can later on go walking and, and see if I match them. But even though, I didn't get exactly what I wanted. I got into a lucid dream. Um, I I I got before into that those situations, but I think it's becoming easier now for me to either get into a lucid dream or get out of body or something else. And another thing I was telling Mike Michael is that yesterday, for example, I was. Uh, I was bad with the visualizations, um, but I tried to still get out of body. Um, it, it looks like it was a bad day in general, but, but one thing though is that I felt like two channels, two, two awarenesses of me and, and some, some other awareness of me in the non-physical, but I also got the, like a presence of another entity, like a, another soul. And I, and I couldn't describe it because I, I didn't see it. Um, but, I, but I felt it like I knew it. So I, I, I tell Mike, it's hard to describe. It's like you, you get the knowing, but you don't yeah. know how. Yeah. Um, 
So, so basically what I'm trying to say is that by trying these things, sometimes you don't get exactly what you want, but you get something extra, usually something, you know? And, and also, uh, uh, I don't know if it was yesterday or another day. No, no, it was before yesterday. Some maybe two days ago or three days ago. I I also got the the tuning between the awareness of the physical and the awareness in the non-physical. And I thought I I was kind of able to to tune it like i say okay i can get more of the non-physical less of the physical so basically i was able to feel less of the physical more of the non-physical and go back uh, um and that matches with what tom campbell says about uh, parallel processing that because another thing that happened to me is like you you expect things to go in a certain way but they go different i wanted to get an OBE that wasn't like an impact OBE. And it ended up being like a very transitional OBE. It was so smooth. So it was, it was like a graduation instead of, a, I didn't get any sleep paralysis. And that's another thing that is particular about me. I never get sleep paralysis. Hmm. I don't know, maybe because of the way I vibrate, I, uh, I, I mean, it's usually smooth. I, I don't get that like strong transitions yeah i don't either I've, <clears throat> I've been waking up with a lot of things in my room like animals and spirit and um lower vibrational beings like what look like demons but are probably i don't know if they're human or not yeah but anyways i keep waking up with them in my room and they want to go in the light and so all night long i'm like just wake up push some things in the light go back to sleep wake up push some more in the light so I had to open a portal for them to stop bothering me all night. <laughs> and Michael forgot that he had this period of time that that happened for him too. Oh, no, that's really cool. It's, so you're doing like a form of retrievals. Um, of course, it's kind of like um, uh, involuntary. Yes, I'm just um, like I went to Texas and this started happening there. I was at my friend's and like animals were bothering me. Like, you know those birds that fly like this? Yeah. They were flying through my energy body and I'm trying to fall asleep and they kept flying through and I'm like, it, I couldn't fall asleep, right? You know, cause you could feel it every time. And then um, I finally got angry <laughs> cause I was getting no sleep and I just started shoving and shoving, going the light, going the light, scooping birds and throwing them in the light. You know, then wow. the next day that this cat like sucked energy or something from my mouth woke me up that pissed me off i pushed in the light but i looked around and there were like 50 animals in there like wolves pigs cats dogs all these animals and they yeah, i always was, feel like there's there's not enough conduits or not enough um pe people like us and so you end up getting like a, it's like it's like a company that doesn't hire employees and just puts more work on the existing employees that's you well I wasn't getting any sleep. I was so exhausted, but you know, the other animals were just sitting there. They weren't bothering me. I would normally just go to sleep and let them be. But I said, do you guys want to go in the light? And I saw a head nod and I said, all right, I'm just going to light up the way for you and you can walk in. <laughs> and I, oh, lit I, yeah, for years, I've always been very paced. Like they only do like one thing a week or something, you know? And for you, it sounds like they're just like, okay, you're responsible for this this set of million things that need to go to the light. It's interesting that we're even needed. I'm wondering if it's because of your energy body, because it's so lighted up and maybe it's- That's it's, it's, um, that's what Michael just said, that he, uh, he went through this. Everything was coming to him. Um, he ended up being so annoyed with it that he made his house invisible so that, you know, they couldn't see his energy anymore. <laughs> and I didn't do that. I made a portal outside so that they would stop coming in my room and waking uh -huh. me and my dog up and stuff. Yeah. I'm not getting any sleep. I'm exhausted, you know. That so. is so fun. Well, hey, it's a pot, it's a negative side effect of something very positive. So 
And yeah. Then, so, but then in the morning after I made the portal outside, cause I was using my pendulum, I wasn't sure if I needed to put it in my room since they were drawn there. Right. Or whatever. And the pendulum was like, no way. I won't get any sleep if they're walking through all night. My dog will keep seeing him and waking up. So it was outside. It said, do it outside. I did it outside. And then in the morning I checked my pendulum and it said 10 lower vibrational beings. They could have been human that um, become malformed over time. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, but people think they're demons. They could never have been human. I don't know what they are. But um, about 10 of those went in the portal on its own and about 50 animals. You know, this reminds me of, this reminds me of bug zappers. <laughs> <laughs> it is the light, it's attract. Yeah. I know the light attracts them and then you hear a bzz, bzz. <laughs> So I just, time, feel, you know, I just feel uh, obviously I don't want animals lost and stuck on the yeah. on a plane. They can't figure out how to go to the light or whatever they yeah. want to do. Um, but it's making me feel a little bit like a reaper. That's there. Th there's a similarity there. When I've watched those shows, there is kind of a similarity. Um, and it's not necessary for all beings to have this. It's just that some beings, like you said, if they get really stuck or whatever, they need that extra power source uh, from us to to help them along. Um, well, I, I opened, don't. Yeah, I opened the portal when I was in Texas for them, and now I've opened one here for them to just wander in. Um, yeah, basically, wherever you are, you're going to think of it as you're a light source. And so, yeah, you can just set something aside that's outside of your awareness. And and then this way they can do their thing and you don't even need to be there. That that sounds like a good idea. I thought it was a lot better than just making myself invisible. <laughs> well, like... <laughs> and, and there may be times when you want to participate, but it's all about pacing. Like I said, once a week, you know, maybe in your deep of sleep, you know, while you're still sleeping fine, if it's something interesting, you want to learn something. But yeah, I mean, you shouldn't have to deal with the day to day craziness. The, they're, they're building around you. Sure. Um, Daniel, what happened? Did you go to the hypnosis thing the other day? Uh, so I did book in with Mary Rodwell on Wednesday, and that was really cool. And I had the choice. So m what's going on is mm, I've um, right before I interviewed Robert Van Rocks, like I was going to talk to him Monday night. Monday early morning, I was awake, laying in bed, and um, it felt like I was getting a full body massage, and I lifted up and floated out my bed bedroom, and it felt really good, actually, but um, then I had a vague memory of being clicked in with a seatbelt, and then I just came to, and I was on a spacecraft, and that was, and then it seems every night I'm having something happen um, whether it's that stuff or angels or reptilians, whatever, <laughs> uh, every, every night. And so I was like, oh my God, what is happening? Has this been going on my whole life? And I don't know. And so I thought maybe I should get hypnotized. But after talking to her, she said, you have a choice. You could be hypnotized or, um, and you'll get the answers about whether you've been taken on board craft your whole life and what they're doing and who you're meeting with and all that. Or we could do this guided meditation to open up your channel to your higher self and your spirit guides. And then I won't need to continue to be hypnotized my whole life and to get answers. You'll just talk to your guides and get the answers. So I chose that one. Long, long story long. <laughs> <laughs> so how are you feeling in terms of your ability to communicate now? Do you think that anything has changed in your mind and you're starting to hear things or feel things or something? So her guided meditation was pretty short, uh -huh. like 15 minutes. Uh -huh. She spent the rest of the two hours. Um, basically, it was like a one on one lesson on how to receive those messages from okay. your guide and you, what they feel like, since I still am not hearing yet i think that is coming but um i have the visuals um but there was a lot of feeling and she kept she works with you to not work with your left brain she's like 
it was it was really cool to get this like one on one lessons from her. Um, like she had me hold my hands like this and she goes, ask your guide to touch one of your hands. And I was like, I didn't feel a touch. I didn't feel one hand feel hot. And I was like, it's this one. And she said, yes, it was your left hand. Like her guides can tell her which side they touched, but I don't know because I didn't feel it. Mm. So it, it's just crazy how it, it was a good lesson. I'm going to say it was worth it. And you get the recording to listen to again. She says that that guided listen to the guided meditation and that lesson again, I will get even more and more because during the, the session with her, there's a sense of performance anxiety and can I do this? And I'm on the spot, you know, and you do feel that like, yeah, bit of pressure. Um, she said, it's like even better to listen to it again and continue to, to get more and more and more. Yeah, I, I think that what Claudio has been teaching me, it's really about just being sensitive to something that you might already be experiencing on some level, but you're just not aware of it. You know, and, and is that wrong, Claudio, what, what I'm describing? No, I think it's correct. I, another thing I, wanna, I wanted to add that, even though I've been practicing this for maybe more than 10 years, this year I, I still see a big jump. Um, and after sharing, the, kind of like creating a team, that, that we, so the, the, my idea, I, I've been having this idea maybe from last year. I say, why everybody that does consciousness exploration, they, it's like they work out by themselves. It's like I work out at my home, you work out at your home. Why don't we try to go in a team to the gym, let's say, right, to practice? Um, and since I've been sharing stuff, especially with Michael, because Michael is becoming also like a, like a good friend of mine. Like, <laughs> um, I'm very, I mean, I have a certain good chemistry with him and, and I Sometimes. share a lot of stuff. I share stuff that I don't share with other people, you know? Well, uh, Michael and I know each other from another life. Oh, really? At least one. At least one. At least one. <laughs> And I show up in her dreams. Uh, don't tell my wife that. No. <laughs> uh, we are definitely on the astral. So, so by, by sharing these things, it looks like my experiences are getting better and better. Um, because, for example, even though I, before lately, I was able to see text, but then I started to get it at a, at a, at a higher level that I was going to my bathroom, my eyes open, and I started seeing text in in the in certain areas and uh, that's what people... mary mary rodwell says that that's how it is for her initially she started off closing her eyes to see stuff which is what i do and i know michael does but um uh she started it's she says it's now she's got this like window on the side where she gets um information right. we, are, we are joking with michael oh, by the way we are also on telegram Telegram is a good platform to share stuff, especially when you want to transfer video files, because it, it has a high limit. It has a limit of two gigabytes. Okay. You you cannot do it in any other. You cannot do it in WhatsApp or. I'm anything. on Telegram as well. Oh, that's good because to to send videos is is great. Um, so so then going back to the text, I started seeing text in in certain color in in like white color. In the bathroom, and I think it has to do with the with the background color. But then, I, I, as I was studying that, I mean, for like two days, I was seeing the uh, the text in white color. But then the next day, I started seeing in black color. So I was saying, like, like oh, by the way, another thing that we use uh, the terminology that Michael and uh, me use, we use the terminology of, of my team. Because I don't know exactly the number of members of the beings that are behind me. I know I had a team, but I don't know exactly how many are in my team. Why don't you so, ask your higher self or ask ask yourself? Well, at some point I did it with a pendulum and I asked and I know a, a few of them that they are, but I didn't keep asking who else is there or something like that. 
Mary uh, Rodwell was doing that with me on, on Wednesday. I mean, I know I have six. I don't see them clearly. I see like outline kind of silhouette. They're not easy to see mine are not easy to see. But anyway, it looked like suddenly I started seeing bigger text, handwritten text in black, strong black. So it's like, it's like I, I, I thought I was making progress and suddenly a, another jump. Huge, I mean, big uh, text in, handwritten text in black in, in a wider area. And then uh, I think it was the same day or another, or the, I think it was the same day. I was walking to the kitchen. I was seeing text all over in different places as I was walking. And I, I was getting out of the kitchen and still seeing text. So with Michael, we, we say we are getting an AR, augmented reality. So it's like I, I've seen a, another layer. On, on I think a lot of people see writing and it's um, like, are you clear audience? No, no I'm, I'm very bad. I actually, actually want to get better with, with it. Yeah. I so think that think... when you're not clear audience, you get the writing in a visual way. Well, in my case, uh, uh, I want to share some some things with you. Michael, I think, knows. I Certain things I experienced, I asked for them. I, I asked to get better on seeing faces. At some point, I wanted to see faces. I was failing. But I said, please, I want to see faces. Come on, give me some. And I started seeing faces. So it's like, thank you. Then I say, thank you. Uh, so I did the same with text. Text, uh, I wanted to get text at some point. And this happened like three years ago. I want to send text. And I said, text. And then insisting by it. And then one day, text. And then the text was clear, crisp, exactly like uh, homogeneous, all, all the same size, like, like what you see in a, in a Facebook page. Yeah. So these were like jumps, something that I asked for it and, and I and I got it. Yeah, your intention was set. I um I also see writing, but it's not it's uh it's not human writing. <laughs> I don't know well, what it says. Well in, in that case, uh, <laughs> te teaming with us can be useful for you because we are we are one of the things that we have is developing tools using JavaScript. Uh, we use also PHP. That's, that's another good thing with Michael that we are both programmers, so we we also understand each other. The, the, we share some code among uh, between him and me, uh, and we we play with with tools. Um, and then there the, there are tools that some tricks we can use to to help uh, help visualizing letters, for example. So later, later on, I can send you a link. Uh, I have a certain area on a, on, on a website that I have these tools. Uh, and now that we're here, let me, let me show you something that, that you can see how, and, and that's another thing, I don't want to use the, the word brain because everybody assumes the brain does so many things. Is the brain is the fantastic machine that that creates everything. And to me, dreams are not created by us. Dreams are not created by me. Dreams are created by a system. I, I mean, we are fed by a system because I played a lot being aw awake with the construction of the dreams. And, the, and I also happen to be that I use uh, 3D software like Blender that creates the 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 lightning the it, it, i mean you can render the the shades and they are always perfect so I, I i can never agree with the belief that my brain is so smart that i it can create the rendering so perfect i mean I, I, why don't we see imperfect renderings because i i cannot think that all the brains are perfect so i prefer to believe that there is a system that is feeding us with the imagery already rendered so we don't have to do anything basically we're just see the output that that's what i what i think it is yeah so we, i mean where, where, where claudio is, is jumping is you know how like we know when we're in the astral plane yeah i mean it's not us but what he's saying is even when you have an unconscious dream where um you know it's 
the, the silly ones like you're back in school and whatever, even those he would claim are actually being synthesized by a system. Like it's like a like some sort of interactive video system that that's in non, you know, maybe non-physical or in the spirit world. Um, and his claim, and and like he said, the reason he's saying is that it's he doesn't think it would be possible that a human brain could could create all the shading and all the lighting that you know how like when you do your art, I mean you're able to do it up to a point of realism, but you're not. It's not like oh my god, it's a photograph, right? Yeah, because I also we also use a blender and the software. You know, you know the the so the techniques to to render the lining are so complicated. The computation that, that is done by the, the 3D software nowadays is super complicated. I mean, we see the, the movies from Disney, but you know, the, the tools that are used behind, uh, I mean, the how can the, I, I mean, let's suppose that it is the case. How come the scientists cannot discover this computation, the, this rendering computation in the, in the brain? Well, so that's when, why I mean I abandoned that belief that I think that like and that's the thing like you could have a moment where you walk by somebody glance and walk on and you don't remember any details but if you were hypnotized somehow you saw every single bit right. where is that where is that memory stored is it not the brain or is it somewhere else but you that, can that's... still recall it under hypnosis right. every detail you can read what their shirt said in a me the memory, the detail. Yeah, my, my assumption to make sense of everything is that everything is stored in the cloud, let's say. So that's why it makes sense that when people talk about Akashic records, everything is there. I mean... So you think in hypnosis to get to that detailed split second, that is you're accessing the Akashic record to get all that detail back? Well, I, I don't know exactly who is accessing, but the source of the information is is from a from something like a database like a, like a cloud okay uh, that that can be copied to different places but there is a centralized area that stores everything it, you know what, it makes it makes sense i mean you know what's interesting is dolores cannon talks um she used to use i i didn't even i haven't even read her books but i know that anytime people would go under hypnotic regression she was used the term subconscious to describe what she also would say is your higher self so it's kind of funny because we because the psychologist would say well subconscious is just the part of your brain that you're not you know aware of day to day but then for her to then equate that to the higher self would suggest that maybe the subconscious at least in her words are come is is something is some other non-physical system entirely. So it's an interesting question. I don't I don't know the answer. I don't know either, but I know well Mary Rodwell just described like how people need to ascend higher than the fear level. But she said you have to ascend next higher over the ego level to get I don't know to become conscious. The ego level is also so if we're getting hmm. into ego conscious and subconscious you know like okay yeah so so what you're talking about is vibration and this is a debate i have with claudio is that i feel like i'm always in a low vibration so but he might be naturally in a higher vibration so that when he closes his eyes he sees everything whereas for me to get to that state i first would have to relax feel good thoughts that kind of thing whereas maybe for him he just closes his eyes and he's already at that level I don't know. Well, I think I we know. just get information differently. Claudio is very visual or clairvoyant, and you might receive information in a different way. True. Oh, this is this is a good opportunity for to to ask you, Daniel, because I'm learning so much with uh, having other people like uh, Arlindo and and Michael because. I notice in the way they are the the process of learning for them is different than how it was for me. So let me tell you some some history about how it went for me. I started with trees, and actually it's curious because the day I started was I wanted to be hypnotized. I went to somebody. I think it was after my separation, or maybe after I got divorced, that I was kind of like my mind went back to. Uh, more into consciousness consciousness exploration and I, and I wanted to get something uh, I said well I want to get hypnotized um, in the session 
I mean, I. She failed to hypnotize me. Uh, and I, I got the suspicious that that I was hard to get hypnotized. But but I got something out of it that she said, well, imagine that you are in the in a forest. And then I was surprised that I got a forest right away Be because before I, I haven't tried. I, I, I don't know why, but I didn't try to visualize forest. But but this uh, doctor, she she told me that and I saw some forest and I saw and she was telling me other stuff. And I think I also saw some fire, but but the main thing I remember is the trees, so many trees. So so after that, I, I, I was thinking two things. One is the failure of not getting much. But the second one is the success about seeing something that I was seeing so many Who trees. Who told you that you weren't hypnotized? What? Who told you you weren't hypnotized? The doctor? Yeah. So, but, okay. Well, maybe myself. I mean, she didn't say anything. I, I, I paid her anyway. So. Yeah, but I don't see a big difference. I, I'm not sure there's a huge difference between a guided meditation and hypnosis. Like you're still kind of in that same wave. My friend was just telling me last night that her dad had gone for hypnosis, and he didn't think he was hypnotized. But the woman put a cigarette out on his arm, and he didn't burn. Well, but anyway, I, I didn't get any extra in information. this hypnosis. I don't think she really. I don't know. But anyway, the the thing is that from that start, I I said, well, let me try again, and, and I closed my eyes, and I I kept seeing trees. So basically, I started with trees, but then then mountains came. But another thing I I started using like the first months is that whenever I was seeing something lighter on top of something darker in the bottom, I imagine that was the sky on the top. And then I, I also had some pictures and I was explaining to them how I, I used that trick of seeing some shapes, whatever shapes there were, I, I was relating those shapes to mountains or trees. And then whatever was behind was the, the sky, usually at night, because usually I started mainly with dark uh, colors. So then from there on, that helped me a lot to start visualizing something right away, like a sky, mountains, and tree. So, so I had something recurring that I can start practicing with seeing that. And well, then, you know, yeah. Uh, when I interviewed Rick Wick and he was describing his Kundalini awakening, he described exactly the same thing, where he starts off seeing a color orange and then he um, visualizes like what the shapes are and he sort of, sort of with his mind forces that visualization to happen. Kind of like when you look at clouds and you go, oh, that's a right. a fish, that's a bird, that's a... And another, because we, we keep learning and, and I we transmit among uh, each of us what we are learning. Um, one thing I, I tell everybody is that People tend to, I mean, or like, or or because so society does that, tend to compartmentalize, compartmentalize everything. It's like dreams are dreams, or some people say just dreams. Meditation is meditation. Lucid dream is lucid dream. Astral projection is astral projection. OB is OB, and everything is separated. But the more you get into it, you notice all those things can be so integrated. Uh, and another thing that people well, one thing I don't like, I keep saying, is the assumption that the subconscious that creates the dreams. Everybody believes that. Subconsciousness creates dreams. Okay. But another thing I don't like is imagination. They tend to separate. Okay, yeah, one thing is your Im is imagination. Another thing is dreams. It's like totally different things. And the power of imagination is is uh, everybody underrates the power of imagination. It can be, a, a, I mean, take it as a friend. Don't worry about how much you're imagining, how much you're not. Start with imagination and then you don't know the limits. You, you don't know what you can end up with. And actually- kind of, I just wanna just affirm that isn't that kind of what that person you were talking a few days ago was saying was that it's almost like you gotta imagine that the guide is doing that to you. And then over time, it'll just happen. 
It'll, you know, yeah, imagination like, is your can be your friend. Don't don't question it. Don't separate it. I, I, and it's not only me because uh, going back to Tom Campbell. The, by the way, Daniel, I I know a lot about Tom Campbell because I read everything and I participated a lot in forums with him. So I know I know a lot about his model. Um, he he wrote a trilogy of three books and then lately he. I don't know if it was a year ago or something like that. He has a book called Tom Spark. And he says that he found out that by starting imagining things, imagining a park, right? so he, he describes the park, the different areas of the park, like a park with activities, that that's the best tool to start uh, exploring consciousness, especially for people that have traveled with other techniques, uh, I mean, like standard, uh, out of body techniques so so then he starts with the uh, imagining the art in this park and he start with the imagination and then the imagination can help you so we have somebody that is agreeing with the that imagination is your friend i mean don't question it too much start with imagination then don't worry about it i mean well, later on you you'll find out and you can do analysis yeah i um I mean, I was in a meditation group for a month recently, and the guy was like, oh, it's so great Danielle comes because she's so imaginative. And I was like, I am not, what I see is not my imagination. I'm seeing things that are real. Right. Like if I come and tell you that I was flying around with an angel, then I was flying around with an angel. I did not imagine that. Yeah, but, you're re you're receiving that information. That that's something for sure. You're receiving that. I'm going out of body. Mm. That is not my imagination, but I think the imagination is a good stepping off point. Like whenever, like we talked about, when you when you do a guided meditation, there's always the beginning. The beginning is, oh, you see a tree. There's a door in the trunk. You open the door. You go through. That part is your imagination where you start forming what you're seeing into this tree, into the store, and you go through. That going through is actually almost like the launch. Because if you think about it, I, I can relate to the computer stuff. Uh, maybe we can say that imagination is your intention to get something, right? And from your intention, uh, you you can approach it in two ways. You can start using a tool like Photoshop and start drawing something, right? But nowadays you have the other choice of throwing a prompt to the to an AI system. So when when I'm talking about imagination, it's like the starting point. But the most effective thing is to throw the prompt to an AI. So that that's how my experiences are lately. I, I don't think about the details. I just throw the the basic uh, thought. Like for example, if I start with a basic thought of a of a of a tiger, I, I start with the basic thought is like I throw tiger to the the system, let's say or uh, um, and then I start seeing sceneries that I never thought about. Some suddenly the tiger is jumping is jumping to water, is doing things that, that I I didn't imagine at all. I started, I mean, it, it was the jump start only. It was uh, the, the first step, basically. I think so, I think so too. And I understand that you're using a computer lingo because that's where your bases are, you guys, mm -hmm. and how you work. But um, that's the same idea. This, the imagination was only the start. And then after that is is you're seeing and I don't think that's my imagination. You know what's for me is that because I'm such an analytical person, I need that 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 like you said, the tree with the door. I need that 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 starting point to get myself out of myself so that I can start experiencing. Because if you're in that analytical space, it's you're you're it's you could be more closed off to the receiving. Right. So Whereas yeah. for other people, they're just like they're imaginative all the time. I mean, they they look at the world and everything is is fun and artistic. And I, and I think that is bad is that so many people when when kids are imagining things, 
you know how powerful it can be for 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 kids to to keep using that and in, and keep using that as adults. But people say, oh, you're imagining things like it's something bad. Yeah, uh, no, they definitely get shut down by the parents. And yes, it can adults. be so positive. Yeah, I don't think people realize how very powerful our our creativity is, and we are creators. And so, if we're imagining something, it's like we're creating it too. Well, now that that, that we are here, can I show you? I want to share the screen and, and show you some of the tools we are using. Sure. So I'm going to share my screen. Do you see a, do you see a like a pink uh, square? Yeah. Yes. Well, notice this, how, how the mind uh, creates reality uh, or let's say we channel the reality from the system but we adapt to it this is this color right <laughs> yes <laughs> look what look look at the color how intense right look at how it changes don't, don't you think think that the pink became darker So it's lighter now, the pink looks lighter. And then it becomes darker. Right? Don't, don't you think that yeah, it's darker a, here? That's than a here? psychological trick. Yeah, the here, here it looks lighter than here. You see? What is the same color? This color doesn't change at all. It's the same color. The code is the same. Well, this. We, we use this uh, slider to, because for me at least, I get better visuals when I focus on the square. And get into the square, I can see text here in, in light color. And if I started failing, I, I can choose another color. Lately, one that was working for me is uh, 55. Five. This is RGB. This is a number from zero to to two fifty five. This color works good for me. Uh, for I I kind of lose myself inside this, and I see text in light gray or white, almost white. But sometimes like I also see in blue. Face in there. Yeah. Interesting. So anyway, th this these kind of tools are good to to try to to see things with eyes open. Of course, with, if you close your eyes, <laughs> what's the point, right? Uh, so then we also have counters. We, we I use these counters. These counters are audio. So then, if you start counter, you so can't then, hear it when it's shared, but yeah. Oh, in the share you cannot hear. But anyway, this. This is these are useful because you can set up for 5, 10, 15 minutes. I don't have to worry when you have your eyes closed when it's going to be done. And for example, today in the practice with Arlindo and Michael, I set it up. Uh, usually we do it for five minutes. And then, I, then I can tell I start with, for example, I start the counter. Um, and then when I hear the end of the counter, I say, well, it's done. You can also use your phone. <laughs> Well, you can also use yeah, the phone. Um, yeah. In this one, letters, one, one letter I like is the H. The other day we practice with H and, and A. Here, here I set it so that when the mouse goes over the white, is it becomes black. And then when I move it, it's white. So if you stare at the, at the H this way, and you stare at the edge maybe like a minute. And then you go and look at the white area. Usually you see the edge in in a dark color. Yeah, so so there's a natural phenomenon of afterimage effect that you first get, which everybody gets. 
But what I found is that when I practice it a little bit more is that you're able to kind of keep bringing back the after image and then you start picking up like almost like other letters in the after image. So it, I feel like <laughs> if you it, it's it's just um, I see it as like a like a different tool or a different way of attacking the uh, the superimposed image problem. Well, I also have some words uh, with audio for this. This is in my case. These are four words I use, and I can use it with audio. Is for me to remember and try to remember this for lucid dreaming because I want to improve my audio. So I have audio to improve, try to remember that I had to try to get some audio. Then I have the words OBE, AP, symbolizes astral projection, and link. The link for me is. Um, it's a short word to that symbolizes a connection. So by by having the just the word link, uh, I associate it with a connection. And then, if I remember in a lucid dream the word link, then it reminds me I can try to communicate with a, with some some entity or something. So I, I use the word link for that short word. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh... Yeah, I want to hear about um, about Danielle's sort of experience with uh, with her visuals and how it's evolved. I know, um, I know, I know. You know, people that are will say it came naturally to them, but I don't know for you. Was it something that's kind of built up over time? I think it did. I started meditating. Um, at first, I'd see like sometimes just geometric shapes in kind of neon colors then um seemed like i was seeing space and stars look like okay. like dots of light look like stars i thought it was stars um i think it i think it might just be energy matter um dark and light i don't really know but what happens for for a while i would get this blue it looked like Kind of like the color behind Claudio. Um, I'd get this blue kind of like cloud. And for me, I would think it was like my window. And once I see this blue color, I can see whatever I want. Nice. So I thought I was just remote viewing. I think the blue was my own aura color. So Rick Wick saw orange. I think probably that's his aura color. Um, now, and I always do see that bluey purpley color. Um, and I do know that that's my my aura color, but um, I think now it's. You know, I'll close my eyes and it looks like space with blues and all the light, you know, the stars and whatever, but it becomes like a wormhole. Like a hole opens and you could just go through there. Yeah, nice. And then what happens when you get to the other side? Yeah, no, I'm checking. Well, it depends. If I'm uh, doing a guided meditation, then I'll be guided, like listening to where, you know, I listened to one, I wanted to go to uh, Shangri-La. So next thing you know, I'm seeing this glistening city in the mountains that appears and disappears. Um, if I have my own intention set, I want to go to uh, Mount Shasta. For example, I was doing that a lot before I went to Mount Shasta. Then next thing you know, I'm seeing Mount Shasta, but I'm seeing a being floating in, in front of Mount Shasta. You know, I never I never really hear though. So I can see the being, but I cannot hear anything. Well, Michael is gonna help us with the audio, right, Michael? Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we'll start playing my, my, my crappy music. But um, but seriously though, um like like from a I, I always ask Claudio this. He's like, it doesn't matter. But like when you see these imagery, is it like if you could, it would be a good enough image that you could like draw a picture. Like it's like it's it's almost like photorealistic, the, the imagery to you, or is it more a little bit wavy? Uh it just depends, I feel like, on how uh, how good I'm seeing. You know what I mean? Sometimes I see really clearly it will look like a movie. Wow. 
sometimes it's too many layers. Yes. Like a bunch of movie screens are stacked behind each other and I, yes. I have to try to focus my attention on one. Yes. Um, and it can be pretty hard then um, to see anything because it's too much at once. And uh, sometimes it's more just colors and shapes that are kind of cloudy. So mm -hmm. I just, I get it differently. Just, I feel like if, if I'm very grounded and my chakras are all good and my energy channel is good, everything's clear, then I see the best. And if I, if I'm not seeing well, then I need, it's time for me to go get my, my chakras cleaned up. That and so, so for me, like, for example, I lose, I typically lose a dream less when I'm all kind of stressed out and stuff like that. Whereas when you're calmer, it's like you tend to have more energy infused into whatever experiences. Do you feel that way? Like when you're all stressed I out? I do. I, it's, it could not be just stress. It could be, uh, I mean, even if I, if I have an argument with a friend or my mom is sick or something that my mind is worried about, then you are unintentionally sending energy to that. Mm -hmm. And then you're draining your own energy. So I do think like you've got to cut all the lines, all the energy lines that you might be inadvertently sending out, just yeah. mentally cut them all, um, and make your energy, you know, intact. Uh, if you're leaking energy, because we all do it, we do it all the time, you know, um, it's not to say don't care about somebody else. Or don't. Yeah. You can I know care what, I know what you're saying. Your energy, it's you it's balance. You it's like your physical energy, not yours. Well, it's like your portal. You know, it's like you're still sharing your beacon, but you're not. But you're also getting your sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That's cool. Um. Okay, so so you see a lot of motion usually, Daniel. Motion. Yeah, th things that are moving, not static. Yeah. Do you do you? So this is an interesting thing. So I typically don't move. I'm sorry. What? How do I explain this? My camera doesn't move. The objects move. Does your? Do you feel like you're moving within the vision, or do you think the vision is moving? <laughs> I've done both. Yeah, same sometimes, here. sometimes I'm just like looking at somebody and usually it's too close, like really close on the face and I can't see like, like stand back. Yeah, I have to like back up and I and I'm always like right in their face. Oh, that's so um, fun. I think when I first started, I did think I was just remote viewing. I would just like zoom in on just the mouth or just the <laughs> eye, you know, like, yeah, I like had to back up somehow and now i see the face but like when i'm trying to draw something i don't see a lot of the body and like if it's wearing clothes and all that so uh, it i think it just comes with practice yeah but it's and, been both i've been a it's been flying around before flying yeah around, flying it, it, because because you consider it practically to be like an out-of-body experience and then even though you feel like you're still in the body it's almost like you can be exploring through your visual. Yeah, it's really weird because um, I can be meditating and I'll wear like my uh, blindfold and see oh, kind of like <laughs> and go and, and see like so much, but then my dogs like will jump on me and I'm still conscious of my body too. And like, I'll pet my dog, talk to my dog, still looking somewhere else. It doesn't bring me back. Excellent. Yeah, you and Claudio are very similar. Both of you use eye masks, and both of you are basically <laughs> traveling within the body. Where, you know where you still have physical realization. Another, another uh, reason. I, I call it a point of consciousness. Like I'm yeah. a point of consciousness. Yeah. Outside my body and still conscious of my body. Okay. But I have been surprised to think that I'm um, a point of consciousness, and then all of a sudden my hands come into view, and like, oh nope have a body <laughs> here's a question have you ever done this? so maybe we can do this exercise claudia right where where each of us has a little experience and of course we describe it to other people while we're having it so that it guides other people but have you ever spoken while you're while you're visualizing um just you know there was like 
that one time where I had the room full of people that were throwing energy at me and trying to keep me like kind of a paralyzed, um, immobilized. They were trying to hold me down. And they said to me, you got to come with, with us. And I said, no, I don't. And, um, and that's when I saw my hands come up and I started blasting them with energy back and not consciously. I didn't know who these people were. I don't know why, how I knew that I didn't want to go with them, <laughs> you know. Did you see faces uh, or, uh, I mean, people? Okay. She, remember, she draws them. I do she draw them. Faces, and they're not always human. <laughs> they're not. They're most, let me, more let me, let me tell you some, some useful things about what I do. I mean, at least for me, every, every, every time uh, I, do these things i i feel like renewed like uh like i feel with a uh, new energy i i meditate inside with a video that i watch i don't know if i, I use the right words basically i started i close my eyes i like water so I, I usually like water and i see i'm seeing it right now i like water with rocks um I go on and and I see the waves, let's say ocean uh, and the rocks and I, and I I build a, a beautiful scenery and then I relax and I, I watch the scenery. So I meditate with the video that I watch <laughs> with the eyes closed. So it's like watching a video but here. Yeah, you're really With the good mind. At visualizing. Yeah. So that that's one useful thing that I can meditate with a, a video scenery that that is there, and and I tend to use the word I create, but actually, uh, I I would say I co-create because I don't think I do it because I don't do the details. I just think of water and and then I kind of like keep keep it flowing until I like something. When I like something, I kind of like try to stay there, you know? So I like certain type of scenery. So I, I try to keep it there. Um, but an another funny thing is, for example, I, oh, I, I use two tricks. When, I, when I'm not happy with what I'm seeing, I shake the screen. So basically I'm seeing something that is not that nice, I shake everything. So when I shake everything, it's like, I don't know, like uh, a washing machine or something. Uh, and, and then I see something else. And then and sometimes another trick I use is sometimes the scenery is not that exciting, but I see a small area that has nice colors. I focus on that small area. Sometimes it's a small rectangle. And I go there and I go in a small rectangle and first, I try to make everything neat, very small in the small rectangle. Once it's very neat, once I'm very happy with the quality of that small rectangle, and then I enlarge it. I enlarge the rectangle and I get inside. So that's a way of changing the low quality, boring scenery that I had before into a new one that is better. Another trick that works for me well is that by flying, um, I usually end up, I can end up in a city because I start flying, for example, same trees, then, then I see some houses and then I keep going, I keep going, I keep going, then I see like a city and then I go in the city. And then one thing I do often in a city is I see an area with grass or something like that, like a park and I see people. And, and then it becomes one of my fun, fun things to do. I see the people and I see them walking, some people walking in one direction, other people walking in another direction, some kids playing here. I see a lot of people you know, at the same time. But then the, the funny thing becomes, okay, I say, okay, that, that woman, okay, I make, I make her dance. And I make her dance some steps I like. And then another guy on the right, I make her dance another an, another type of dance. So then I have fun having different people in that scenery, the same scenery, the city, 
but like four or five different people dance in different styles. Huh. Sounds like you're doing Sims. <laughs> I know. Well, it's he, he, it's like he's creating he's creating the environment there. Yeah. And he's sometimes controlling other people, and he's they're not they're it's a construct. It's a yeah, co-creation. Sort of it's a yeah. co-creation because I I let the the stream come, but I modify certain parts of the stream. Certain certain particular things that I want to modify. Yeah, I'm it's try as, it's, as minimum as possible. So the question is is how often when you're doing this co-creation where you're saying hey I want you to do this and they do that does something unexpected occur that's perhaps like a message? Yeah, that, that's what happened recently that I, I posted something. Uh, I think I also posted in UMO that I was I was doing the drone camera and I, I was seeing a lot of stuff with greens, grass, I mean plants, uh, and it was like a, a road uh, with dirt, dirty road. And then I saw a lake and I say, OK, I, I don't know, but I like water. and and when I was in the lake, uh, I started enjoying the view of the lake and suddenly a, a rock splashed in front of me. That was nothing that I welcomed. It was an unexpected thing. And I, and I took it like a, a joke or, or something from my team. Because I, I mean, <laughs> that, that's something I super unexpected. I mean, yeah, no, and, right, and, suddenly I got that rock. <laughs> And that's something, you know, Claudia and I have been discussing. You know, when I meditate, obviously I'm not getting nearly the visuals of, the, of you two, but I always am focused on getting messages from my team, right? That's like my main goal. I'm my I'm not I'm not like somebody that's like, oh, let's draw a scene, let's have fun. I'm I'm always business, right? I'm always trying to find out what should I do next, which you know what I'm saying? And I'm wondering if you're a little bit like that too, Danielle, where it's like it's like your really your goal with all this is to get messages and information. What do you what, what would you say? Yeah, well, and it does seem like my subconscious is is knows what it's doing that my conscious self doesn't. So I find myself meeting with people, being on craft, going to space, going to planets, like. And I'm I'm just like walking around. Dur, 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 I don't even know what's going on, <laughs> but. I seem to, I seem to have a mission, a goal, things I'm accomplishing, you know? Yeah, you're, you're, you're like an observer. It's, I feel like what Claudio is doing is a lot, not all of it, but a lot of it is like, it's like vacationing. <laughs> yeah. Whereas you're more of like an observer. No, usually usually that's what my, usually that's my starting point because the, the, the thing is that it's useful for me. I, I'm working in the computer, right? And, and I, I'm, I mean, I'm doing so much that for me, I start with something that I, I get easy. I get the flow, but after after I go in with the flow, then I then I try to do stuff like trying to see text, try to try other things. But but I usually start with that because I know I, I'm gonna get a, a in a better state. I'm gonna feel better, uh, and I think that favors uh, what is coming next. But don't you think though that your teams are kind of have different agendas, like? I feel like in Danielle's case, her team is almost like we got to slowly open her up to all the craziness that's going on that she's not even aware of. And meanwhile, for Claudio, it's more like it's more like a personal thing where it's like I want to understand how the system works. There's nobody really telling me what to do here. I'm just kind of going through it and figuring it out myself kind of thing. Do you think there's kind of a difference in the and the people that are working behind the scenes for you two? I, I think, um, well, what's weird is, you know, I draw all these things and I'm not, I don't seem to be scared of them or anything that looks unusual, but my own team, it seems like they, they don't, I don't get to see them very well. And Mary Rodwell was like, well, not everything is a humanoid. So maybe they're trying to get you used to seeing more, more and more unusual. And I'm like, yeah, except I've never been bothered by any of it to start with. So. I draw, I, I go. So why are they so shy? Yeah, why are they, so, or I'm, I'm starting to feel like maybe they're just very far away. When you say far, you mean like, like vibrationally, like they're on a much higher, like they're in the hockey zone and you're down here in the earth zone. Maybe they're very high vibrationally, but maybe they're very far away. 
universally. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, I know what you're saying, like Andromedans or something. You know? <laughs> maybe, I don't know. <laughs> or maybe even time. Maybe they're from a different time period. So it's like this weird interconnect that you're even lucky to- Well, even Michael Shaman does not see my guides. He only sees a shadowy outline like me. Mm. And I draw people's guides. So that's why I'm like, I, I'm not off put by something looking unhuman. Yeah. Clearly. But, you know, some people are like that. I notice when I tap into people's higher selves, I find that some people's higher selves are just like, there's, it's like it's like file not found. That's not to say they don't have a higher self. It's that I'm tuning into the wrong frequency. They're they're way up there, and I'm you know down here like a like a child. And and I feel like you know like in your case, it could be somebody that yeah is just so vibrationally out of out of um, tune with with earth vibrations that you would have to be in almost a state of ecstasy to be able to even sense their presence. I don't know. But, but be, like, care, be careful with those beliefs, though. They can play against you, because if you think it's difficult to access them, then it's going to be more difficult, because you are already thinking that it's difficult. Well, uh, no, it's because I've literally meditated to see them, and they're very, they're very hard to nail down. I mean, they could also take on avatars, right? I mean, if they really wanted, they could pretend to show themselves. You know, they could come up yeah. with figures or something, or... Um, yeah, we'll we'll see. I, I I got some little glimpses during my session with Mary Rodwell, um, but still not clear. Yeah, for example, from NDEs, uh, one observation I saw, I remember particularly one NDE, that the beings tend to uh, relate the the look and the size uh, as a, as showing some particular level because for example you should is is normal to for i mean normal but i, I remember this in the that it says well first i saw two beings that were like uh, i don't know eight foot high and then i saw another one that was 20 feet high so and, and then with more light so i, I think the beings play uh, play with the whoever comes there and they they make them feel that they give them a, a representation of, of their level so if they represent a higher level it's going to usually have uh, i mean a bigger size uh, um, a, a more higher amount of energy let's say or light compared to somebody else like warm or no yeah, I what you're talking about reminds me of the few times I've seen angels, which before I saw my first angel, I didn't even believe it. I thought it was just a big myth. But yeah, I mean, they showed up to me as like just massive beings, yeah. you know, like just twice, I mean, at least twice the human size. Like you said, glowing. Um, they send off a sound wave, like almost like a tone. So I don't know. Is this you? You're shaking your head, Danielle. Have you had sense of experience? Um, some experience? Yeah, I have. But I mean. I've seen other ones that were not that were not so large and all that. I, I don't know. I think they can look different. I think oh, yeah, that, of course. What I've heard of it's Archangel a, Michael is that he is like 10, 10 feet tall, glowing and all that. Yeah, that's oh, so interesting. That they one thing I wanted to ask you, Daniel, uh, what, I, what I do now, one of the things I do now is that when I, when I am planning to go out, let's say today or later or tomorrow, I can see myself, I changed my clothes in, with eyes open, uh, how I look. So, okay, so I, I get these black shorts with this shirt, these, these shoes. No, I think it's gonna look better. So I changed, I changed my clothes mentally. Mm. And in, in, a, in a only like a very, very few situations, they didn't look as good as mentally when I really saw them, but in most of the situations, this is in much is good. It's a good selection. So I don't, I don't need to. <laughs> that's a well, practical. normally, like I'm saying, I don't even feel like I have a body, but I'm probably do. I did do these guided meditations in this group. Um, it was really nice. And he would start off the meditation by going into a cloak room and taking off our ego, hanging it on a hook 
this mm -hmm. with a sign above it that says to be cleaned. And then we put on a robe, but I imagined there was a mirror because I wanted to see what that looks like. No ego. And uh, it was, uh, I drew it already, so I'll find it in my pictures. Um, I, I'm sure, Michael, you've seen it before. I don't remember that story, though, of you taking off your ego. That sounds so funny. Well, I might not have shared that one because so I have a picture pretty... of your ego. That's interesting. <laughs> or no, well, or is this without her ego? This is without the ego. Oh, without the ego. Well, this is what my higher self looks like. Oh, that's right. You've shown that. Yeah. I've, but well, see, see, here's what I would say, Danielle, is and I've said this before to you, is that what you call your higher self is 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 actually your guides. In other words, each mm -hmm. person out. I know and they're, they're no, I, I, I say the same thing. It's not the same yeah, thing. No, no. We also have something called the soul guide. That's that's even above our higher self. But that typically is pretty high vibration. But I all of my past personalities are my are the guides that I access on a on a daily basis. Um, they're just different parts of me, which is what I call my higher self. So yeah, I'm having a hard time finding the one where it's not shifting the face. Yeah, they're shifting. So yeah, I would have no one idea. One of those what... faces. It's one that I drew, and it's like my my higher self has three faces that shift. Yeah. Um, and when I took my ego off, I was the blue one with the red hair, and well, mm. the skin has scales, and the nose is a little bit like a serpent. And I'm like, okay, what is that? <laughs> you know, is that <laughs> what is that? Because uh, you know, there's reptilians, right? Uh, but this doesn't look like a reptilian. Uh, they're serpent beings. It doesn't look like a serpent being. I couldn't figure it out, but with my session with Mary Rodwell, um, it I, what I the answer my origin answer is dragon lineage. So mm -hmm. the scales and all that is dragon. So Claudio actually had a dragon experience a few weeks ago. I remember. I want I want to get them again, but I didn't I didn't try again because they were but so, but I so wonderful. And I so guess. Fun. You agree with it is that is that their that their role that like dragon's role is like uh, guardians uh like portal guardians is that right or is, uh, yeah yeah so i have a natural ability to open and close portals with my hands but um which apparently is my you know from my own lineage but um if you want to have a dragon experience then just try to remote view me <laughs> okay let's try <laughs> And you will meet my guardian dragon. He's pretty uh, protective. He huh. doesn't really let people look at me. Okay. That's Maybe. right. That's right. When we try to remote view, the guardian is basically like, no, uh, she's off limits. <laughs> Maybe, Maybe yeah. one thing, one thing that can help Daniel is to choose your favorite dragon. So then I can put your picture next to that dragon and, and get the two together and then try to. Oh, I have like, a favorite. Huh? I do have a favorite because he's the one that lives in my house. He's the one that will go keep you from seeing me too well. Oh, okay. Well, but anyway, you'll see, I, my, you'll see him instead. I I, I want to see him actually, not you. <laughs> but ahead. I use I use you like a, like a target. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you the target, so, and you will see him. Right. So do you want to do you want to try like something like a free flow thing though, where each of us does like maybe like a five minute free flow where we're just so it's it serves two completely different purposes. One is when you're the one that's free flowing, you're just closing your eyes and describing your experience as you have it. And then the two other people are just are trying to kind of follow along with their own imagination or whatever. So so you see how it, it serves two complete, you know, one to to the two receivers, it's a guide imitation, but to the person who's actually doing it, it's like they're describing in real time what they're experiencing. But people will use mirrors oftentimes. So if you have your augmented reality, you could look yourself in the mirror with your augmented reality and then see if there's anything interesting appearing. Yeah, oh, okay. I usually just close my eyes and say, well, I close my eyes and I say, what color is Claudio's aura? And then I'll see the color. Oh. Like Can you I, see my like, color? <laughs> well, right now my eyes are like not adjust. I see the rectangle. Okay, we green. We need to start. Okay, so so who wants to start? Who wants to do? I I am the worst at this, by the way. So so I'm like playing with letter blocks while you guys are going out into galaxies. You know. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm just waiting for my eyes to adjust. All right, well, now we're all uh, completely blindfolded and the first contestant can, uh, no, I'm joking. <laughs> well, I, I see a face looking up. Uh, well, it's so dynamic. Now I see Frankenstein. I don't know why. <laughs> Frankenstein with uh, the face uh, light green. Oh, come on, what's going on? Well, now I see a woman. Before that, I was seeing some guy that didn't look that good. Now I see a very beautiful woman. Uh, on the left, nice hair. Nice eyes. Now I, sw I switch to, so I'm in facing mode. I don't know why. I switch to uh, a guy, now a girl, now a boy. Oh my God, it's like a lot of, it's like, it's like morphing faces. Um, the face is, uh, the face that is morphing is, is dropping from top to bottom. So, now it's gonna now I see an eye in the place where the face was. And then I see a new eye coming in from inside the previous eye. I I was talking to Michael and Arlindo that I often see eyes when I am in the practice with other people and I, I get the feeling that those eyes are some beings uh, being with us in the in the experience and then it, sh it shows in my mind uh, as the representation of something watching us uh, like eyes. Now I see a very beautiful eye with the big lashes, eyelashes. Sometimes I think it's the universal, like the all seeing eye, in the, you know, out in the universe. Mm -hmm. I see it a lot too. I don't know why today, I mean, uh, yesterday and today I'm not. So my experience of visions are not that rich. Well, now I suddenly see a dragon. <laughs> not very <laughs> clear, like uh, left to right, flying left to right. It's not many colors. It's like mainly black uh, with some gray and some white or light gray. The background is uh, a mix of green and blue. Uh, it has uh, different areas with some areas with more light and other lights. So it looks like kind of like um, some light source uh, coming from behind. There were two, now there is only one. So now it changed. Um, and I see the top of trees. And I see like an opening in the sky. And I see stars up there. Oh, now I see an alien. I see the head of a gray actually watching from, from the sky, watching down. Now I see like another face. I'm getting the feeling that a lot of beings are watching us. I don't know, I don't know maybe because of Daniel or something, uh, getting a lot of viewers. <laughs> uh, another ugly alien, but I don't want it. <laughs> They're not ugly. No, only one. Well, no, I don't know, but not good looking. <laughs> good grief. I don't know. I, I want to stop here because I, I, I'm not getting rich things. But anyway. That's too funny. It's like, um, yeah, they, they should have. It reminds me of that. Those movies where they have alien beauty contests. You know, it's like Good. Different, different creatures from different. You know, they could hear you when you tell them when you say things like that. Well, the, these alien was it was a, a, a weird mix because it, it started with a, like a gray. But it became the nose uh, that it was uh, all malformed. So maybe I think it was the the mix of two two channels 
maybe some channel was interfering, like getting did, some. Did the gray have any, uh, what color did the gray have? Do you remember? Gray? It was, it was gray. gray. <laughs> was it? Uh, Sorry. <laughs> Do you think then that maybe it was uh, one of those? I don't know, it may happen to be gray this time, but it had maybe a little bit of green, very, very little, very little. Do you think that it was one of those lower vibrational things I've been telling you guys have been coming to my room? I don't know, but the, the, the gray, I got the feeling with the gray that, that it was uh, a good being. It was, it was what happened after that, uh, but the, the, the gray was, Okay, I mean, I'm gonna tell you. Didn't get the feeling. What, what color? What color eyes did he have? Black. Okay. Sorry, but is it the, the okay? TV? So, so I'm gonna tell you something funny. So I, I um, I asked to see you, but in your native form a few days ago, and uh, you were basically a greenish gray with black eyes. That's hilarious. so. Maybe maybe it was me in a previous life. Yourself. No I'm joking. It, it could have yeah. been me in a previous life. Maybe. Yeah. But maybe it's the, you without your ego. No, and notice how you called yourself ugly. So you have uh, what do they call it? Image issues. <laughs> Body dysmorphia. Body dysmorphia. <laughs> That's funny. But, it, but you know, the funny thing about the nose is when we were talking about this um, previously about the like the the funny looking nose, like being sort of like a witch. You know, like you know the the caricature of witches being like with the. And I'm almost wondering if it's demonstrating to you that, like, on the one hand, you're a gray, but maybe in a previous lifetime on Earth, you might have been like, uh, like into magic and stuff like that. I'm just throwing out symbols. No, I, I got the feeling that was some interference. Let's say it's like uh, because the okay. gray, I had the image of somebody good, a good being, mm -hmm. positive, and then it was some interference. But at the same time, in the interference, I didn't feel anything malignant. Because I think I can sense something bad, but I didn't sense anything bad. It was just some noise. Maybe maybe it might have to do that recently I had Halloween and I might have I might have in, interjected some something I remember something in my memory from Halloween that got suddenly interjected there. Well, what you were describing though looked like something that was in my room a couple of nights ago and why I've opened the portal was to get rid of these things that are they're just lower vibrational things that are ready to move on. And they looked gray and they were kind of lumpy and malformed. But I don't remember an eye color. I saw the eye in space though, when or you start to- Maybe, maybe later you can show me a picture. It looked also like a little bit like the nose of those um, dwarfs of, uh, what was the name of the, the Disney movies? Like yes. trolls? The or, seven, uh, the seven dwarfs, or something. Oh, the like seven that. dwarfs. Interesting. It, it looked like one of them. The nose. I see I that a lot of my like like the hat or something like that. You know what's funny is I see like these really long looking or big noses um, in my when I do my image stuff. You know my um, that the 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 camera and the spirit and all that stuff. I, but and I don't know if that's just due to just us looking for faces in the in the noise, but but it but I do see consistently like a lot of being that has like a nice big big nose like that. So it's interesting. Um, a lot of the stuff from the like in the fairy dimension that Middle Kingdom, they can have interesting faces and noses and stuff. Too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah it's different. I mean, I yeah I want to yeah exactly gnomes trolls. You know, these are all um, beings that are literally right next to our dimension. Yeah. So. Yeah, and I have a portal to them as well, right, right there. Okay, I, I send it <laughs> you there. Need, um, you know, you know the ring, t uh, the ring. Uh, what is it called? The ring camera. <laughs> yeah, it's like, yeah, I know. I tried, and um, it made it made my golem leave. Oh, because they they're they're uh, what is it? Photo shy. He didn't want to be, they can feel the, the, you know, when okay. somebody's looking at you, the, the lens that he didn't like it and he left. Mm. And he was with That's me for cute. years. What? He was yeah. with me for years and he left because he got tired of me trying to constantly catch him on camera. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I'm like, that all right, so I took my ring to work. I don't have it here anymore. Uh, you can come back. I'm not going to spy on you, I promise. <laughs>
That's so cute. Well, right. would we try with somebody else, no? Okay, so who wants to do it next? I, I'm really bad at this. So, but do you want to go ahead, Daniel, or or and say what I'm seeing? Yeah, this see, this is a new a new uh, vista for you. I, I, I honestly, don't, yeah, I don't normally do this. Yeah, I know. You know, I only started this a few weeks ago with uh, Claudio because before that I would put on earplugs. I would, you know. Go oh, to by the way, Daniel, what I, what I'm telling because I I want to mix uh, with some people that don't have much experience. And, and I I say that if you don't visualize anything, just say something. Uh, and then maybe after saying, you can see it. Or even if you don't see it, you just say, uh, you say something. Okay, I'll try. You're putting me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> I normally do this alone. But anyway, this is all positive. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, I mean, I'm already seeing uh specks of light orange and green moving around um like flowing and magenta kind of looks like space like except the stars are colored um it's moving now in a circle uh green do you guys see any of the colors? No, I, I don't see many colors. Uh, I saw some green uh, today too, but I mean, these days I'm in a specific case. I don't know why I'm not seeing so many colors. All right, well, I'm seeing a I lot saw, of I saw blue. some blue, no. Yeah, I see green, I see, I see some blue in the middle. Um, it's, it's almost looks like a shape. I'm trying to make out what that is. light keeps coming in on my face mask right now. Uh, it's swirling. It kind of looks like it's starting to look like a galaxy or possibly opening into a wormhole in the middle. I think if we try to focus on the hole in the middle, then we could maybe go through to something else. Like maybe we could find some water somewhere. And I see blue. And it does look like underwater. I see like a cave, like a Mexico, like those caves in Mexico, like. They yeah, are well, with water, right? Yes. Okay. So if we go through the cave, oftentimes caves have portals in them. And we can target where the dragons are. I, I see like, um, uh, how do you call it? Like uh, dolphins or uh, mermaid, no, no mermaids. Uh, what is it? The seals in the water in the cave. Do you? Yeah. I'm not seeing beings. I'm still seeing just flowing color. Oh, no, there's a seal. <laughs> no, maybe go. <laughs> I send you the seal. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, manatee is the word that I was I was looking for. I saw also a manatee earlier, but those are from Florida. Yeah. What is it? What is the manatee doing in the cave? Don't ask me. Hmm. I don't know. It's probably looking for a way out of here. Yeah, I just am seeing colors again, so I'm not getting. Too much else. I don't know, guys. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I got, I got some kind of like a into a tunnel after that. Um, wow. Now, now I'm seeing like like a like a human. Two now two two humans uh, at the end of the tunnel. I I think we should 
the contact Guinness Book of World Records for three people wearing sleep masks in a Zoom meeting. <laughs> but, but you know something, Michael, uh, I got the, maybe this is another another variation of this exercise that, that yes. uh, Danielle was starting doing that. She started talking, right? But maybe it's not a bad idea to, to do some exercises when you allow other people to talk too at the same time. <laughs> like, uh, mix, basically mixing the, the realities. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like that could be an exercise too, but, but it's almost like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, um, yeah, you kind of have to give people a chance to, to, to just see what they see. And if they don't see, you know what I was going to, yeah, I was going to offer I, something I while you were doing it, but I decided against it as I was starting to feel my heart chakra warm up. And I felt like, that's what I'm going to be using when it's my turn, because I know that you said that the heart chakra can kind of help activate some stuff. What I actually was seeing when you were describing your stuff is I was seeing like this brown moth, uh, brown butterfly slash moth. It was really weird. So, yeah, that's good. Um, I, but I saw the seal after he talked about it. I'm like, oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Well, maybe, I, maybe in May next time we, we put some of signs in the in the animals and say something like hello or some some word. I was thinking we could create a line of sleep masks, you know, where it's like, you know, that time to visualize. <laughs> well, but I feel bad because the one that Daniel has looks like a pro mask. <laughs> a what? It looks very professional compared to Oh, I know. Ones. That's really nice looking. What is Wow, um, it's called the mindful. It says is mindfold. Oh, so it's got like this it's got foam. the foam and yeah, and I've cut the foam so it was pressing too much on my sinus and I couldn't breathe cut, really good. Yeah. So I cut the foam to fit my face better. Can you open the eyes with the, with that on or no? Yeah, yeah, it's got the. Oh, oh, I see. Oh. Do you, so you I, only I use can open this my one eyes, to... which, um, which is fine, but I let you have to seat it so that light's not coming in, and that's where I was messing with it because oh, I was opening okay. my eyes, but light was kind of coming do, in a little. Do you do only, and you only do this with meditation. You don't like wear it. At, do you try to wear it at night for sleep or no? Yeah. No, my room is so dark at night that I don't need those. Uh, that at night, um, it's yeah. pretty good. I could just right, close so... my eyes and see everything in my room. So should we should should Michael the uh, I was joking uh, with the previous session uh, that I was uh, visual that I could visualize letter blocks like I'm a little kid so uh, but I but I might I don't know I can give it a shot and we can yeah. see uh, what and I, I may end up seeing a lot of patterns and textures so maybe that'll inspire you guys I don't know all right all right we'll see and then after that I think I'm getting hungry I have to go okay we'll yeah it's okay we we, we did we'll let you go Thanks. one more okay one more. So the first thing I'm seeing is my blindfold, which is kind of funny. You know what's funny is I'm not getting a visualization. I'm getting my music. <laughs> I'm getting music. Well, sing, um, sing something then or something. <laughs> well, it's a song um, from a play that my daughter did. It's like. It's like all we need is love for one another. Um, so that's what I was getting. Um, I'm, I'm actually getting like looks like a little bit almost like Danielle's face. Like I'm just getting like red hair and um, yeah, I'm very uh, what is what's the word? I'm very meta right now in my visions. Um, <laughs> Um, I'm seeing like, it's interesting. I saw half of a moth and now I'm seeing sort of like, but it's now on the other side and it's like half of a wing of like a, also a moth, but it's, but it's, this one has white wings and a dark body. And, um, and now it's become a circle, like a ball of circle, white circle. Um, and it's now interconverting into a triangle. And, a tr and then a black triangle within it. Um, and then it becomes almost like the letter O. And then it's kind of forming back into an I. See, we I was getting an I earlier too, actually. I um, had a vision of an I. 
So maybe one of your team, one of the beings in your team. You know, um, but I would have these guided meditations with Michael Shaman where he mm -hmm. would ha take me to see the all seeing eye and then you um, you merge your third eye chakra with that eye. OK, I'm going to try that right now. Let's see what happens. Yeah, do that. And then imagine your third eye open. OK. So far, my third eye is. I don't know, it's just giving me some circles like a large dark circle, two satellite circles, um, almost looks like an upside down Mickey Mouse. Um, OK, that disappeared. I almost feel like I'm looking at everything upside down, like there's a night sky uh, below and the sky is above. That could be the way the light impinges in from the, the blindfold. Yeah, it feels like I'm up. I feel it feels like um, like if somebody like bent over and looked up at the sky. What it feels like. And now it's rotating the horizon. I'm like looking at the horizon. The horizon is rotating counterclockwise. And I'm seeing. Um, yeah. yeah, and it keeps rotating. One thing that I'm really able to get do well is like once I lock on to something, you know, it doesn't have to be much. I can get it to rotate pretty smoothly. Like, well, what uh, about what about moving forward or something like that? Um, no, but I'm getting those, but I'm getting really nice smooth rotations. <laughs> hey, we got something. This looks like Saturn with a ring that's that's basically rotating counterclockwise around the uh, around the planet. It's really pretty. Right, right now I'm flying over some. Ah, uh, yeah. See, while you're flying, I'm I'm playing with my my stuffed dolls. <laughs> <laughs> I always have but, things rotating as well, though. Okay, cool. Like yeah, no, and I like it. To me, and I see like orbiting, but. For me, it's clockwise. Yeah, right now it's going counterclockwise. Uh oh, it just stopped. Maybe by you saying see now it's going the other way. Now see it's going. It this is what happens when, you, when somebody mentions something. Now it's turning clockwise. Okay, so it, I guess what they're demonstrating is that it doesn't have to go in one direction or the other. It reminds no. me, it's like a three-dimensional Saturn. So now it's like end over end rotating, you know, but at an angle. So it's really cool. <laughs> I, I've been looking at Saturn in the telescope the, the last few weeks, so so it's kind of a nice. Uh, I, I once again I consider it like my team just having fun with me because what they're doing is essentially sensitizing me to different imagery, and you know giving me things to focus on so that I can build up my vision. Um, the colors are pretty simple. It's like at best a neon white green, but and against the black background. But so it's not so it's not much in terms of color, but. Um, and that's rotating a little bit faster. Um, uh, this, the planet got a little bit small. Well, no, it's about the same. But what about in the center where the color is? Do you start seeing shapes that become faces or anything? I see a lot of faces. I'm seeing a lot of faces. I saw faces with with uh, guys with uh, hats, uh, mustache, uh, and glasses. It sounds like you, Claudio. <laughs> no, well, maybe no different type of glasses, though. OK, OK. Yeah. No, unfortunately for me, it's pretty. You know what it is? Is there's just not enough resolution in the image. So another thing that I noticed for myself, at least, is a lot of times the the uh, imagery for me takes up a fairly small real estate of my whole visual field. Um, I assume for you guys, it, it can take up the whole visual field. Uh, yeah, but sometimes I also use the trick that I, I get good quality in a small area, like I was saying, and then I after after only after I get the good quality, then I expand it. That, that's a trick I use. All right. Yeah, no, my my vision is right. like mostly in the middle, Michael. Yeah. And then sometimes yeah. it's full. All right. I think we'll stop there just because yeah, I think they're they're giving me just you know like a simple thing to work with and um but it's interesting that you guys seem to kind of, 
you know, not getting bored with what I was saying, but it, you kind of had your own thing. So if you wanted to share. No, I was seeing like you would describe the color, the circle, yeah. the orbit. Mine turned direction after we talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I think uh, Michael says you're getting rotations. You can use the rotations to create maybe a wormhole and, and use it as a portal. And then awesome. maybe you'll get surprised. Another thing I want to share with you, Daniel, is that I was telling Michael that I, I usually when I do the forward going going forward like flying like a drone, I usually tend to focus on at the end what I'm seeing at the end, what was coming next, let's say. But then I tried a variation where I where I don't focus on what is coming next. So kind of like leaving leaving it open to a surprise. By doing that, I was getting more variety. Mm -hmm. So so basically not to focus on what's coming next, because when you usually when I was focusing on what's coming next, what was coming next was similar to what it was already. Yeah. But by by leaving it uh, relaxed at the end instead of focusing at the end i was getting more variation more more surprises that's cool uh, okay yeah. and another thing i uh, on uh, this time when you were talking i i started seeing mountains and trees and something that i wanted to get better at uh, is that I, I usually get better when I'm close to the surface, but the the higher I, I go, sometimes I, I get uh, I don't get a good transition between lower altitudes and high altitudes. So, but this time uh, I got good high altitudes. Uh, I was I was seeing I don't know maybe like uh, half a mile high. Mm, wow! Uh, pretty 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 good height. Uh, you need to get a pilot's license. Terrain. I was in space again. <laughs> Always in space. Can, can, for example, Daniel, can you start from seeing something at the surface level and then zoom out till you see the planet? No, I don't even. I didn't see a planet this time yet. No, I, not this time, but some other time. Let's say I want. I guess I'll see. I'll. I usually. I usually do, like I said, I'll do a guided meditation to go where I want, or I'll have a predetermined thing I want to go where I want to go, and that's my focus. So, um, yes, for, there. For me, it's easy when I see the planet first, and then I go into the planet, and I go down to the planet, and I, and I see the zoom in from from starting from the planet to the surface. But when I do the opposite way. I, I had some trouble sometimes, especially the transition from half a mile to outer space. Usually I, I jump into outer space without seeing that transition when I, when I go. Yeah, that's what I do too. I don't travel around. I usually am there. I just go there. Right. So, all yes, right, well. Okay, thanks. Yeah, thank you guys so much. <laughs> Yeah, nice. Well, have, have, have a good one. Um, I think I think uh, I'm gonna make it for the Zoom on Tuesday. Oh yeah, you should come. Yeah, eight I'm joking. So are you gonna play with the cubes now, Michael? Yeah, <laughs> Ruby's cube. Okay, take care, Danielle. So have, have a good weekend. Daniel, I, see, I think I see you on Tuesday. Okay, bye guys. Bye. bye.